Hi guys. Bex changed the colour of her hair. <laughs> She's still drinking red wine though. I am. She is. So just so you're not too confused, this is Shay. And we're in Prague at the moment. She's met up with, I'm shooting here for th four days with Matt Osborne, Mr. Like a Guy. And he's next door filming a techo video on lenses. I couldn't be bothered doing that, but he's <laughs> doing that. And she, we did a, an inspiring YouTube video before in this tiny little room, but I was pretty happy with how it was. Yeah. Cute room too. It is a cute room. Yeah. And yeah. But yeah, Beck, Beck's now officially on holidays. She did Harry Potter yesterday. I think she's flying to Amsterdam today, she, so she'll do space cakes and be a disaster tomorrow. <laughs> we'll see if we can get some You're footage to send you. You're, You're jealous? jealous. I'm Why, was, I don't get it. So, how come people who can smoke dope any day of the week, when they go to Amsterdam, I've got to smoke dope? Yeah, what but it's, it? a it's a different calibre. It is different? It is a different calibre, yeah. Like better, or is it just like, illegally can now do it? No, like the US is even better, obviously. But if you're if you're by European standards, because it's like legal there and it's all done properly, and you know, it's just it's. So what's wrong with Australian level? backyarder shit? Don't get me started. It's agricultural. It's, <laughs> it's a full glyphosate, isn't it? It's still started. weeds killer. <laughs> I don't know about any of you, but I'm on the medical license. The over medical. There, so. <laughs> well, I don't do it because I go up smoking when I was 30, so I can't do it. And I got so paranoid when I was young, like ridiculously paranoid. I did it bad for maybe a month of my life. And I couldn't walk down the street. Every car that walked, they said, no, I smoke dope. They can tell I smoke dope. I'm going to get arrested because they know. And I just it really messed me up. Mm. And until I gave up smoking, I hung around with heaps of guys and been in the band, of course. But I'd mostly do a joint a month and get the munchies and go, oh, why do I do that? I'm going to be paranoid tomorrow. And I was always paranoid the next day. Yeah, see. I, but I hear that a lot from people that have smoked for a long period of time. Yeah, and, but I hear so, so it's, I hear like the dream thing we we're talking about before. People yeah. who smoke don't, don't dream, and when they give up, they get they don't get dreams. They get nightmares. They want to kill them. <laughs> and I know of other people, um, like even Beck. Beck smoked it for a bit, and also I need to do it to sleep. And then when she stopped doing it, she actually said I went to sleep better. Yeah. But that, yeah, she actually felt this wasn't doing why I thought I was doing it. I was doing it to try and get to sleep, but it wasn't actually helping her. Well, you don't get REM sleep. What's REM sleep? REM sleep. Like, I don't What's know. What's REM? Is that REM and Stimpy? It's the proper, it's it's the proper sleep that's restoring characters? you and making you all healthy and reju rejuvenated and also inducing dreams. Oh, is that you've dreams. got to buy an eye watch to know if you had REM sleep? Is that, Probably. That shit. And also to catch catch any dodgy behaviour with you and your partners, oh. as we spoke about. <laughs> oh, you're talking about tracking your behaviour, your partner on iWatch yeah. to see when their heart rate goes up. Does it say REM okay. sleep on that as well, does it? <laughs> <laughs> but all that technology is pretty fucking good because I, as you know, because Shay was in Amsterdam when our luggage didn't turn up and we were tracking it off my computer. Well, before we travelled, we went back to Apple because Beck's going, I got nothing in the bag, so we quickly got two more eye tags, uh, Apple Air tags for her, and I put another couple on my cases as well. And it was amazing. As soon as I walked out of the hotel, all of a sudden, your bag is not with you. And I'm like, oh shit, it's upstairs. <laughs> yeah, it's saving us. It's saving us. It's saving us. Yeah, but that saving was a, us and destroying us at the same time. It but. is a bit. I did. <laughs> I did laugh when you told me about looking at your partner's heart rate wherever they are, and should they be at gym? At, oh, they're not at gym at the moment. Why is their heart accelerated? <laughs> <laughs> should, uh, thankfully, Shri doesn't. No, but my heart rate's never accelerated. If anything, it's decelerated. Couple of um, what's it? What is it that you drink again? Southern. Southern. Yeah, a couple yeah, of southerns that, later. Or tequila. <laughs> That takes me down. But, yeah, my poor wife's missing me like hell. Every time I ring, it's like, I miss you. But I feel sorry for you. She's sitting home alone Yeah. most nights. Like not even my kids are going up and seeing her because they're sick of her. So, but, no, she's good. She's banned me from ever doing this amount of weeks again. I said, we spoke about I was going to get a place in Paris. Or, she goes, no, nah, you're not doing that now. Oh, it's off the cards now. Well, she said it's just too long now. She can't. I said, well, you yeah. can always fly over. And she goes, no, I can't. I'm about to be grandmother again. I'm not leaving. <laughs> because Nikki's due while we're in America, so I'm in the trouble over that as well now. Oh, uh, okay. 
another grandchild on the way. Yeah, I'm getting so old. Do you know old. if it's a girl or a boy yet? No, she's really no. good. When I really take it off from my daughter. She heard my views when they were first thinking about getting pregnant for the first time. I said, do you know what the most special thing in the world is, is when the doctor goes, it's a boy or it's a girl. Yeah. You don't need the clothes beforehand because the first month, doesn't matter what colour you put Sometimes they get in. it wrong anyway. Then you've yeah. bought all the shit and you've got the wrong... Or yeah. you can be a gender fluid baby. That would be very gender on fluid these oh, days. Genders, Let them decide their gender when they turn when eight born, or something. No, when they're born. <laughs> here, here's a pad. Can put your finger where it watch gen- <laughs> We Beck was booking in, I was trying to get Alishka a ticket to a nightclub we went to and it came down to a list of gender. There were 75 friggin' genders on there. I'm not joking. There were 75 genders we counted. Some have asterisks. I don't know what that means. Uh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, but no, all, all that. Was, but she was really good. She, she decided, no, I like mum and dad's idea of not finding out and she stuck to it. And even though I thought she cheated, she didn't. And then, unfortunately, she her first, like, um, Saxton, the, her first was bought in the middle of COVID lockdowns in Melbourne. So legally, my wife and I could not see her. Even her husband went in for the birth and then had to leave and then couldn't see her. Oh, my God. He couldn't even see his own wife, even though he was in that same room. So if he had COVID, everyone got it anyway. Yeah. But not kicked out and you can't come back till she's kicked out herself. But, yeah, stuff it. That's... One thing I was really angry with COVID was the most... So what's the most important thing in your life? Think about it really carefully. My friends. Day, friends and family. Yeah. And what did COVID take away from us? Yeah, Our friends that. and family. But that's the most important and thing in And stability. Yeah, that on the side. But I still find your friends, friends and your yeah. family... But when really, you lose all of them at once, it's even yeah, worse. Yeah, it's worse. You know? So my poor daughter, she got out the second day after the birth and going home and my mum's on the phone going, what is it? I said, well, my daughter's not telling anybody till they see. Like she wasn't going to go, oh, it's a boy. She goes, no, you, you can meet him or her and then you'll know. So, of course, we legally went around there, fully illegally. My wife was there for mental health, post, post you're from the depression you're not mental health. This. <laughs> no, it was, and I was doing a documentary on the effects of COVID on a photographer who's just had a grandson. So I was legally allowed to go around there. So we went around there. But it, it, all that really sucked back then. But I was really, really happy that she did that. And the second one, it's the same. She said, no, nah, it was such, it was nothing better was when they tell you what it was that it gets born. Yeah. When if you already know, what, oh, oh, it's got two fate. So what else are they going to tell you? Yeah, true. It's going to be Elon Musk. <laughs> Look at the size of its head. It's got a brain. <laughs> but I did really like, I don't know, did we show you the Jim Jeffries comedy? No. Oh, he does a really nasty skit. Anyone who hasn't seen, I'll put it in the link. Not that, Beck's not with me, so the link will go in there. The Jim <laughs> Jeffries one he talks about back in Switzerland. It wasn't that far, it was like in the 50s or 60s. If they were born autistic or something, they were sterilised at birth. Oh, shit. Yeah, so it's a really co- funny comedy skit where it's not quite right and the mother goes, oh, you're all right, and there's a hammer on the head and throw him in the corner. <laughs> <laughs> and I said that's where Greta Thunberg came from, <laughs> the pile in the corner. It's really, <laughs> it's full, it's so, it's, yeah, but I like inappropriate stuff. So I cried <laughs> laughing when the final skit happened. Anyway, Shay's supporting Beck. She's got her red wine. Yeah. I'm not usually a drinker either, so this is fully just in... This is just for... In respects to Beck's... Memory of Beck. Yeah, 100%. <laughs> so if you're watching Beck... We, we even went to the store earlier and he's like, oh, should we get two bottles? And I was like, no, no. It's We'd just... always get two bottles of Beck. <laughs> you couldn't go for one bottle of Beck. And we didn't get the Cheetos either, Beck, so things have changed. Yeah. And just for you, Beck, so I know she'll be watching, so I know she'll be desperate. I had creme caramel last night and you couldn't find it for me. Creme brulee, you Oh, mean. creme brulee, sorry, <laughs> close. Different country. Same, um, same. And my shower is the best shower since I've been travelling. I get better mm. apartments than she can get. It's really cool. She's going to hate this. She's really going to spit it. Oh, my God. Is, is Beck uh, like me? Is she always booking the worst? Uh... No, she tries to do the very best but okay. fails. 
No, but that's that's like me. Like so I just every like, I'm not allowed to book any accommodation now when I travel with my partner because every single thing that I pick is a disaster, one way well, or another. She didn't have choice on this place because Kiki, who was. Uh, wouldn't be officially my first assistant, maybe officially my sis second assistant. She's living in Prague at the moment and she said you have to stay, and it's an amazing hotel, the, the art it deco in cool. it, it's really, really cool. She said we had to stay here, so she, yeah, Beck, Beck couldn't stuff this one up. But My <laughs> thing is a shower, I, I'm one of these people who are gonna kill the planet because I wake up in the morning and to wake up properly and then about 20 minutes standing zombifying with water pouring over my head. Are you hot or cold? Hot. Hot? So hot. You're not doing that? Uh, no, I don't do that. No, no. no. <laughs> never, I know people who do it, not a hope in hell. But my wife's even hotter. I can't go in the shower after my wife. My head would friggin' melt my brain. She has her hot showers so hot. I put like 10% of cold. So you like my wife? Yeah. Yeah. It's like I want to feel like I'm emerging from the depths of hell when I get out of the shower, essentially. I'm not quite there. So I think <laughs> I died... Uh, so I think my previous death was fire or something hot in my face. Because if you put something really hot on my face, I just get really crazy. Mm. But then uh, there's my favourite hairdresser in the world, Jack the Clipper in London, and they put the hottest towels in the world and completely cover your face and you think you're just going to melt. And I'm just saying deep breath, I can do this, I can do this, I can do this. <laughs> Trying to get through it. But, yeah, no, I am definitely a zombie. Get me under lots of water that's really hot but not quite as hot as my wife. And I can just, I literally, I'm just standing there like a zombie. And mm. it'll be 10, 20 minutes killing the planet. We know who to blame when we run out no, of water. No, I do other good things. I, <laughs> I buy stuff that's made in the country that I'm in so it didn't have to do all the greenhouse gas thing back and forth. And I support real fashion. Not throwaway fashion. Mm, that is an important T-shirts that you buy and you don't replace them for We're 15 years. We're looking at years. you shine. <laughs> Look at me shine <laughs> like a diamond. So anybody who doesn't know about Shay, Shay is this amazing model I met when you were, I think, 18. I met you nearly the same time I met Beck. Mm, I was a little bit older. Yeah, around, not far from, maybe 20 max. Can we be really rude? What, how old are you now? <laughs> I'm 31 this year. Oh, so you're only one year older than Sh uh, some Beck, so yeah. it would have been the same time then. Okay. And there was that movie Sucker Punch, and you reminded me of one of the actresses, and Beck reminded me of the other one. I think it was only a really short time I photographed both of you, and I said, oh, oh my God, I've got this cast of Sucker Punch in my studio. <laughs> And absolutely loved it. But we definitely both were rocking the sucker punch haircuts. At you that time. both were <laughs> rocking the sucker punch haircuts, and the attitude. With the I full think. side fringe, the side fringes, the whole and, thing going on. Yeah. And yeah, I shot with you, and I just so scared because I was just, I'm not worthy. I kept looking at the pictures on the back camera, go, I'm not worthy of this. This is just too good. I'm in a dream, but it's the same. Meanwhile, we were freaking out much more than what Peter was. Uh, but. <laughs> but it was the same with Beck. Beck was the second show I did with Beck was like, I can't stuff this up. I can't. I want to shoot with her again. I've got to make sure the pictures are sort of semi reasonable. And Anne was another one. I was so scared of Anne. The only saviour, Anne turned up an hour late, so she was sort of like, sorry, sorry, I'm so sorry. sorry. I'm like, oh, that's taking me off the hook. It's funny, but then. Over the years, we've never shot like a lot. It's like every year we'll try and we get one shooting maybe. Because you've always been traveling a lot. And I always, back then I was super busy. I feel like in the past couple of years, since COVID, we've done at least twice oh, no, a year. Oh, no, we shot much more since COVID. Just because of Europe and stuff yeah. as well. Yeah. But before COVID, I think there was decent maybe gaps in between. Yeah. Um, but even a couple of years at some points, I think. Yeah. Well, we've shot, well, we've shot a lot this year. Which is good. Yeah. This is really good. Yeah, Melbourne, Paris. Melbourne, Paris. Frankfurt. Frankfurt. Prague. Prague. Paris. Maybe Melbourne. the US in a couple Was of months. Was it twice we'll Melbourne? See. Yeah, twice in Melbourne. Twice in Melbourne. Yeah. Yeah. And, and you definitely try and hook up in the US and then tr try and drag you back to Australia again. Yeah. So, but on that, the other note is there's only, there's two photographers that I personally know from young that I follow and admire and Shay's one of them is really good. So there's Kimothy. Do you ever do anything with Kimothy? Have you ever heard of her? No. 
she was a complete crazy person. At 15 years old, absolutely From crazy. From Australia? Australia. Okay. She shot back. She shot lots of people. I'll show you her work later. Okay. She doesn't shoot anymore. She no, Seriously, she had lots of mental illness problems. You, you book into a shoot, she'll turn up eight hours late. Okay, yeah. Just and then she'll vibe. pour blood and then cream and all different shit all over you and... Her camera was covered in paint and shit. She had no idea what settings, but my God, her eye was so effing good. Like even Chadwick's would give her models and she was just a nobody. Yeah. But she had this eye and I talk about your eyes the same. And even Matt, who was next door, he's looked at your work and said, yeah, I can't do that stuff. I could never shoot that stuff. You have to know what you're doing but you really just put stuff on auto or shoot film and then throw the client the film without looking at it uh, a little bit? I try to, no, I shoot mainly manual. I oh, shoot mainly manual? Yeah, mainly manual. I mainly. didn't know that. So I thought in the clubs and that you had to be more inconspicuous. The club, stu- the club stuff is like, I, I have two separate things that I do. So the club stuff is more usually always on film and usually with a point and shoot because that's going to capture that moment quicker. But when I'm doing anything that's commercial or whatever, it'll be on Sony and mainly with the art lenses. Oh, right, yeah. Yeah. So don't really have the choice in that scenario. But yeah, but I was really impressed when I sort of I based it that she was self-taught and she goes, no, I've done enough of your workshops. I just listen to you talk shit. It's true, though. <laughs> <laughs> it's but, true, uh, though. It still comes down. I still think you have to understand the genre you're shooting. Yes. Unless you can be 100% in it, you're never going to get it right. I definitely feel like when I have periods away from Europe or away from, my, like, my social clubbing vibe, like, life over here, that there'll be some separation with my creativity. Like, I feel like coming back to Europe in this past six weeks, I'm having this giant flow of creativity come back through again. Mm. And it's because I'm seeing things that are inspiring those, like, moments that I can Duh, capture One in week in Brick Lane, shortage. It's like, oh, my God. Yeah. Whereas it's I go back to Melbourne, something. it's, like, boring. Yeah. It's, well, it's even, like, I'm not putting places down, but Zurich, you walk around Zurich, you go into Old Town and you'll find the odd shop. You just can't help but look in so that's something weird in. But in Melbourne, Australia, it's, you know, Fitzroy Street, Brunswick Street, Chapel Street, Gertrude Street used to be so cool. Mm. And in Shoreditch, Brick Lane around there, it's like, oh, this has just taken me back 30 years. It is still cool. Yeah. And in Paris, some of the, sh- the areas were up around Pagal, some of those shops are just so cool. You just, every shop you walk up to, go, oh, I didn't expect that. Yeah. And there's somebody knitting or sewing out the back, making everything that's in that shop. And then next, when you go down to a violin maker, and he's actually making the violins. And yeah, it's igniting something. Yeah, really it's, well, like I've been saying to my wife, I want to actually move to Europe mm. for you know, six months a year, like in three month breaks, because I'm just finding I'm the creativity I've got in Australia is just sucking me dry. It's sort of like, yeah. and it's hard. But but I do, I see your stuff and then I look at my stuff a bit and then I hear other people saying, yeah, I want to be a fashion photographer and I look at their stuff and I'm not putting you down, but have you ever bought a Vogue, like a proper Vogue? Mm-hmm. Not an Australian Vogue, which is like new idea, like an <laughs> Italian Vogue or a Paris Vogue or yeah. a, a V, an ID, a Numero, all those amazing, Oyster and yeah. um, I don't know, some Noise, I don't know if Noise is still around. Oh, I haven't heard of Noise. Noise is a freaking good It's a European thing. one? No, it's originally started in Australia. I don't oh, know where. It started Australia in Australia and got picked up somewhere. I don't know if they're still going. Okay. But Noise was a great, like, very indie fashion. And the thing is, all of all of this stuff I can look at and fall in love with, whereas I find that even on the workshops, I start showing them sort of fashion shots that and they seem go, mm, really? So, like, don't say you want to do fashion... It's, it's very hard. It's not, I'm not putting anyone down. It's, you've really, you shouldn't step into a genre until you actually can become it. Yeah. And I was really lucky. My entrance into fashion, because I love metal and things like that, and I entered through goth and alternative and all of that era, and because I loved looking at the Vogues and things like that, I started shooting all those labels back then that way, and all of a sudden the fashion label said, oh, he knows what fashion is, and started walking me. Yeah. 
So how did you actually, you, but you got in through your modelling, didn't you? With, for my eye, you mean, or just for, for photography no, for, and for everything? No, for your clients. They were originally booking you, then they were booking you to shoot stuff that you you weren't wearing. Yeah, it slowly progressed, I guess, uh, classic Instagram story. Like it really progressed from like brands reaching out and they wanted me to do like promo stuff, but I didn't want to become that like influencer girl that just took a really simple Influenza. shot. Influenza. <laughs> in the middle of the street and <laughs> yeah. be like, you know what I mean? Like I wanted to create something with personality. So I started shooting myself and just more, the more cool shit that I made that was like a bit different from those like typical influences, the more they were like, oh, can we actually book you to shoot a full campaign that's like this mood? And yeah, it just kind of evolved from there. So. Yeah, I, I've, I just find it's that thing where standing from the outside looking in, you're never going to get it. You have to actually be in on the inside and then you don't even look, it's, that's what's around me. Yeah. So the amount of pictures I see that come up in the feeds these days are like, that's not fashion, that's not fashion. And then I get onto the right channel, like I've got a Twitter I find, I've got a right channel of the people I'm following on Twitter. Now I'm seeing these awesome fashion feeds coming in, I'm just going, oh, we might have saviours. We might be actually going back to edit, proper editorial. Maybe, because people are getting fed up with social media. Yeah, that's I think, I think well. that's it. Like a lot of people are also starting to steer, like I see a lot of photographers going back to like old school blogs and like this sort of vibe, you know, because you can't post anything. And to, to top it all off, you put so much effort into something, you post on Instagram, like your most prized picture that you've done for the month and it gets no interaction. Yeah, because you mean ghosted or shadow banned or exactly. So or it's just some, like... so, and I find, find this on YouTube as well. Um, Beck and I have had our arguments with YouTube over things, and we tend to win most of the time. But it's like it's your eye of the beholder. Yeah. And they'll say, "Oh, it's adult content." Well, can you please tell me what of this is adult content? Yeah. Where do you? Because if you're seeing adult content in there, your eye is different to me. Can you please train my eye? And when we start getting to nitty gritty, all of a sudden, oh no, we've allowed it. Yeah. It's, it's it's not very clear, the guidelines, is it? And it's too... Yeah, I don't understand. As you it, said, it's too eye of the beholder. Like, what what is... Well, so is council culture. Yeah. yeah. If they look at something and they've decided you've said this, even though that's not what you said, you're cancelled. Yeah. So, and I said a bit with Beck on the last one because it is annoying me a lot. Um, and I think what you said is exactly right. So, I used to have a blog on Tumblr, but I've cancelled that because now they're G-rated. Now they've gone, yeah. Well, they went super G-rated and they came back to the world and said, oh, we'll allow adult content if you mark it. And you mark it and then it, they say, oh, we've disallowed this picture because it's adult content. Sorry, I marked it as adult content. <laughs> and it's not like, it might have been a sheer top. It wasn't even full on. Yeah. Well, I am finding, I'm, I'm, I'm not, well, I do like Elon Musk, but I'm not, a supporter but I am liking that they're given a lot more freedom to you to be an artist and show what your art and I don't know if they go to that but I haven't found any of my pictures seem to change if it has a boob in it or doesn't have a boob in it I see the same sort of interaction yeah and I refuse to censor my work for the Facebooks the YouTubes and the Instagrams but I also find it really, really weird that, sorry Americans, but you're trying to put these fake morals onto the whole world, whereas some of the morals out of America are the most disgusting in the world. Mm. I know I'm going to get shit on this, but I really do feel. We've got Google, Apple, Twitter, um, Instagram, Facebook. It's their morals saying, oh, be good. But if you look at the porn industry in America and all these other things, and the church and all of that, but you're putting, whereas you go to fashion, you look at high-end fashion, if there's a boob showing, it's not sex, it's about fashion. Yeah. And even in Paris the other day, I saw a full-on billboard and there's a whole boob hanging out. Nobody gave a shit because a boob does not mean sex. Yeah. And unfortunately, Helmut Newton summed it up many years ago. I think it's back in the 80s. He did an interview and he said, oh, yeah, America don't believe in bosoms. And he had his own exhibitions. They had to brown paper the front window so people couldn't see in. Oh, my God. This is in America? In America. 
Whereas Doesn't in Paris, me. they would have the same picture on the front window and little kids would walk up and say, Mum, that's a nice picture. Yeah. And you got, we go into the, all the famous art and churches with all the naked. Well, how great was that video of the woman on the, you told me yeah. about that, the woman on the train in, in yeah. Germany and she walks on there, she's just wearing a pair of stilettos and yep. a freaking briefcase. Yep. No one bats an eye. Everyone's reading Nobody their newspaper. Cares. Everyone's going about their day. Like, who gives a fuck? It's just a, a natural human body standing there, not sexualized. you know? Yeah. Well, and, well, like Times Square. Legally, you can walk into Times Square and take your top off. Yeah. Because we did it with Anne and we found out afterwards Anne could have even taken her bottom off. How are the, the reactions from the general public around Ignored you, Ignored us. Completely. Completely ignored? No, well, the video's up on YouTube. People, yeah. I think, oh, no, it's not on YouTube. Sorry. Oops. It's on Inspire. <laughs> um, I've got a blog and I'll put a link about the blog. You'll see in the blog. We have people walking around us everywhere, completely ignoring Anne, topless, just with a G on, in Times Square. Because it's not be, it hasn't been done in a sexual way. Exactly. People just walk straight past. They don't see it. Yeah. And it annoys me for us creators. And there was another, there was a YouTuber, I can't remember his name, but he was talking about how you need to get out there to get seen. But even his own YouTube, he's a little bit of out there about his photography replaced with cat pictures because YouTube said, oh, you can't put that up. Otherwise, they're not going to monetize you. And so I said so at the end, well, your whole, your whole argument's really nice, but you even had to bow to YouTube to even do your argument, yeah. which means, yeah, be boring and we'll show you. Be interesting and we're going to, well, we spoke about this before, shadow ban you. Mm -hmm. like, I still can't believe what you showed me with your Instagram. I have never seen that before. Yeah. But then Bella from America, she got banned off Instagram for two months. She had no right of reply. They didn't say what picture she was banned for. Someone had complained. Yeah. That's that what it. it is majority Just two months, of the time. you're not allowed on here. We're not going to show you why you were banned. Yeah. And she went through all her pictures. And then, all right, she's a little bit towards the edge, but she's not doing porn. Mm. It might have been slightly sheer top at worst. Yeah. yeah. Which they say in their guidelines is actually okay. Well, YouTube's even worse. Mm. If you've got catwalk, you can have fully sheer tops. So catwalk and have fully sheer tops. Do a fashion photo shoot? No. Yeah. You can't. And we had one of Rara's, um, not banned, but demonetized and made because they said it was um, sheer. So in the Google, I typed in sheer. They said it was basically see-through. She was wearing a solid T-shirt. There was not seat, but Rara has erect nipples. She always has. Oh yeah, so I actually have erect issue. nipples if I rub them. <laughs> no, I do. I did a demo the other day that I'm as erect as Rara is. It's just how her it is. It was just a t-shirt. Yeah. And because it had a bump in them, that's classed as sheer. But the Google's says sheer is see-through. This wasn't see-through. We argued for a while, and all of a sudden, they then demonetized about thirty of our videos in one hit. We did got, you win? Did you argue against it and win? No, they demonetize other videos. Oh. So we then had to argue each of the other videos that we won and we never won that one back. Never won? I'm no, surprised. No, and we, we asked, like... Because that's a joke. We're supposed to, once you get over 100,000 followers, you're supposed to be able to talk more one-on-one -on -one with them in the studio. No. Nah. Oh. As soon as you ask why, can you explain, can you show me the exact screen, the, the one-second screen cut, why, they will never show you. I said, how are we supposed to abide by your guidelines if you can't even show me yeah. what guideline you broke? I don't know. A, a noise. We can watch normal everyday TV after 9 o'clock and have nipple show. Yeah. Free all that air. freaking, all that oh, you, the naked show you dating, <laughs> whatever the hell it's Shay called. Was naked attraction. <laughs> naked attraction. I don't know. Naked attraction, it's like you go on the game show and your pubes, your pubic area is showing before anything else is showing. <laughs> and you're judging if you're going to date the person based on their genitals. <laughs> and that's okay. That's just as long as it plays late at night on the general TV, that's fine. But yeah, on everyday TV. And then Beck's all disappointed because her tipping point has been pulled off for horse racing. <laughs> <laughs> I, oh, I just it's cannot. It's just crazy. But I still say that I really feel worried for women. The more we 
sense of the women's parts of women's bodies, the more perverts are going to need to see it. Mm-hmm. And they'll do those stupid things like what happens at Doofs where they pull tops up just to get a glimpse or they feel like they can grab you. Yeah. But yeah, it's, and for me, it's I find it really, I get, yeah. Well, it's shown in it's shown in all human behaviour. When we restrict something, people. Yeah, prohibition. Yeah. They go sick on it. Yeah. The more it's exactly. illegal, the more we want to do it. Yeah. Well, except for when you go to Amsterdam, now it's not illegal. Oh, we have to do it. <laughs> yeah. So tell me how that works. That's uh, uh, look. So Beck can smoke a joint any day of the <laughs> life. The second we get to Amsterdam, I have to buy. A joint. She never smoked it. Actually, in what rubbish bin? So I don't have know how this works. I don't know. It's the culture. You have the to culture. you have to indulge in the culture. You know, you've been polite to the culture. <laughs> And well, unfortunately, I, there the culture is smoking a big doobie. Okay? A big doobie. <laughs> it's well, just the way it is. Also, I still see fashion in Milan, my two biggest cultures, because I believe in fashion. Did you do a workshop in Milan this time around? No, actually? we skipped Milan. No? We just we got to swap it around and okay. we got a few different reasons. There's a million and one people say, come here, come here, come here, come here. We go there and it's like crickets. Yeah. And... Places like Milan used to be really good after COVID. It was actually very, very hard to get numbers. Whereas Frankfurt, Amsterdam sold out in like milliseconds. Okay. Yeah. It's, it's gauging you know, like Canada. We'd love to do Canada, but every time we announced Canada, we cancelled. We've been there twice, we cancel everything else. Because That's surprising because I went to Canada recently and I found like everyone was bringing, oh my God, you, you shoot with Peter. Nah, 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 nah. Yeah, no, I feel like you've got a million once, fans. Yeah, there. we do. We have a very, we look at the podcast. We, so all of our, on our Inspire and all that, we see all the demographics and the figures. And Canada's very high up. Yeah. But they don't want to pay for a workshop. Mm. Same with uh, New Zealand's another one. We have a massive following New Zealand, but name a workshop and, ah, oh, I've got something on that weekend. And I'm not having a go with them because money is limited. Now workshops aren't cheap, but it costs a lot of money to do them too. Mm. And the other thing is what people don't realise, I can sit in Melbourne and work commercially at this rate. Why would I travel around the world and be away from my family, my dogs, my sim, and work for a lesser rate per day? I love how you threw the sim in there at the end. I haven't been on there for so long. <laughs> That's good. I've actually, <laughs> while I've been away, I actually bought a new sim wheel to make sure when I get back home, gonna, I'm going to get friggin' back. It's getting some dedicated it's time. Get some, it costs me a lot of money. <laughs> I friggin' love it. And it does a lot for my mental health. Mm-hmm. I just get on there and all of a sudden I can edit for four hours afterwards. Well, it's probably one of the few things where you really just switch off. Oh, 100%. Completely, completely yeah. switch off. Yeah. And the other thing is I don't drink before I go on it. So I oh, actually, really? You no, know, I can't go on it. Pissed off, freaking come last every race. Seriously, <laughs> once you do it, you actually realise how much. You heard it here much... first. It's the sim. Can yeah. You if I'm in a sim check? race, I will not have any drink at all the, the day up, up until. It affects my time so big. Oh, that's funny. Like, it's ridiculous. You think you're driving so good and you see your time, you're last. I'm not joking. And then the next day I go in there, I say, right, I'm not going to have uh, a beer or something during the day. Get on there. Bang, I'm sitting second or third place for qualifying. If I have one single drink, I'm last. Oh, that's bad. Well, that's why I think they ban drink driving. Yeah. I think there's makes actually sense. something to it. <laughs> it makes sense. Although uh, someone, oh, I don't well, know. This, it's the same for me with shooting, though, when I drink shoot. Not as model. As model, it's okay. But as photographer... Oh, yeah, no, I can't really drink and shoot. Yeah, no. no I think it looks not... amazing. And then the next yeah, day I no. look at that and I'm like, mm, not so amazing, It's not actually. something... <laughs> I'm not something I'm comfortable with drinking and shooting. I think I need to have yeah. my wits and... Yeah, yeah. It's, it's weird how that works. Yeah. But then after the fact, you think, yeah, if I'm editing drinking, gee, it looks good till yeah. next morning. <laughs> Let's pull off those last four layers. <laughs> <laughs> I never forget, I I used to show it in workshops, some of the retouching stuff, and there was a picture that I really wanted to work, and I it was little red-haired Jess. I don't know if you remember Jess, Jess Griffiths, the little, beautiful little red-haired Oh, yeah, model. I remember. Yeah. So I had this old painter's cloth I made perfectly in the shape of a heart. She laid on it. I got up on the scaffolding and shot direct down, and I was so this picture's going to be freaking amazing. And I left it for like three months 
and I started retouching and think, this is just shit. I can't get this to work. And I just put colour layers and stars and moons and shit and all of a sudden it started to work with some overlays of clouds and colours. And two hours later I started looking really good and then one well, let's kill her later. I put vampires coming out the sides of it. And I wake up in the morning and go, what, <laughs> what the, the F were happening? you doing? <laughs> I go, let's delete the vampires. That moon's like dicky. Let's delete this, this and this. And it ended up, it ended up being a nice shoot, but it's a colour picture. It was over-edited. It was not what I do now. But those skills are what you need to do that shit to learn. That's true. And then you can not do it ever again. It is true. Yeah. So I think your first photos are oh, so bad. So bad. So, but you like, thought they were so great. I look back on my first, some of my first shoots, and I'm like, well, Shay, well. But I think that's natural. That's like every creative, no? Yeah, you've really. got to. You really got to. Any the, creative. You, you look got... back on your first bits of work and you're like, what the fuck was I doing? But can you now look back on your current work going off? I can't believe I took that picture. Like, because it was so bad? No, good. Oh. Do you, I mean, do you do sets now where you just look at them and go, I can't believe Oh, you mean I like new stuff that I yeah. shoot? I, I go through waves. I go through waves. I go through waves where nothing seems to work, like absolutely nothing, and I'm just so frustrated and, like, it's just feeding my creative depression because nothing <laughs> is working. And then, like, I'll snap out of it so quick, like I'll just get on my game, like, so quickly. And, like, I notice it even just with ideas. Like, sometimes I've just got n no ideas. Like, it's just, it's like I'm like a goldfish that sees the same castle and just goes around in circles every day. <laughs> and then suddenly, like, there's a whole new world and treasure chest that opens up and I'm so, just, like, flowing right, so with it. So if you're on that, is you've got the model in front of you, she's got clothes on, your goldfish is going around, what in the fuck do I do with this? Then I'm just trying to come up. I, I try and tell a story. I try and tell them a scenario that's going to, like, get attitude. Like, to be honest, like, I fully make the model save the shit <laughs> in those <laughs> scenarios because I'm like, fuck. I, like, I know I can take the decent photo regardless, but oh, yeah, it's no. like I can't work the, like, i The I'm, story. Yeah, and I need that aspect. I think for my photography especially, that's so important. Have you ever tried to empty like just like sit to there, just be blank. Just in, in, go blank, completely blank. Open up your eyes, watch you see. Let the first story come in your head, and then go with it. Well, I so do. I find that works the best for me. I do that with modeling, but with photography, like for me, it's really weird. Like for me, there'll be some stories that I'll write out. Like there'll be shoot ideas that I have of like what I want to shoot in the future. But majority of the time, for me, I have to see a location, and I see a location, and instantly a story comes into my head. Yeah, that's. But, like, I will have the exact photo in my head and I'm so... I'm like, I don't no, care if I have works. to reshoot that ten times. I'm getting that fucking photo that came into my brain <laughs> when I first saw that location, you know? Oh, yeah, no, that's fine. But I found a lot of times that when I got lost, I just close my oh, eyes right. completely, then look at the model and go, what's the first thing that comes in my head? What's first? Then I can build a story off that. Yeah. Where is I might be hung up on this, and she's wearing that, which is clashing with this, and I start getting lost. Yeah. But surely, so I love some of your work. So surely you look at some of your pictures and go, I can't believe I took that. Mm, very rare. Oh, stop I'm, it. I'm, I'm 99 percent of the time underwhelmed. Underwhelmed. <laughs> Completely underwhelmed. No, there's, there's a couple of pictures that just. <laughs> it's a couple of, the, of you, and there's a couple of other people that you've taken are just sort of, yeah, this is what I expect to see in Oyster magazine. This is, they're just so on point. Oh, it means a lot. I know, but... It means a lot. But, yeah, it's probably a but it seems, <laughs> it's, uh, Yeah, I know it means a lot, but it's never going to work till it means that to you. Yeah. And I know that from me. I will look at my pictures and there's some I have to edit because to keep the model happy, I need to... Uh, and I'm not putting the models down, but it's just... It's not my picture. I'll edit and make it nice. And people still go, wow, that's beautiful. I'm sitting there going... But there'll be other pictures I take and I just keep looking and going, oh, I can't believe I... love I, that so Cannot much. believe I took that. Yeah. Yeah. And there mightn't be that great a picture, but there's something in there that talks to me. Yeah. And that's where, because Beck and I have spoken about it, I really need to do a book and everyone's been harping at me at workshops. And I can, 
not far off. I could do a book on Rara pretty quick. Got a lot of content. Beck, I need to make a bit more content. Uh, with you, I want to make a bit more content. I also want just to do an open book of just pictures I love. But I'm just a bit scared because the pictures I love aren't always the pictures that go very well, but I still absolutely adore no, them. No, every picture that I love is never the one that does yeah, well. Yeah, well, that's what I'm thinking. I, I, said I just back. feel like we're not made for the social media, like, yeah. thing, you know? Well, I noticed, like, even with Matt, Matt Osborne, Mr. Like it.com's just over that wall over there. <laughs> but I noticed with him, he just, he saw, because I have, like, even what's happened on my computer screen now, it's just in this... Uh, mode of just picture. flicking through photos. Yeah. He was looking at this. I didn't know you took any of this sort of shit. Yeah. And so I put all my photos out and he goes, I've never seen stuff like this. Yeah. And yeah, I think I am, when I get back to Australia, Beck and I have spoken about this a bit, um, that I will bring out a book of maybe my favourite, just not my crazy photos, because that, and that's a separate, most crazy photos and my, my stuff, I need to shoot a bit more so I can fill a book with exactly my stuff. Yeah. But my just, I love that picture, her eyes are perfect. I love this because they're like this shot. Like This shot. Oh my was, God. Yeah, so we can see it. But it's it, true it that you don't post that shoot, yeah. sort of thing on your Instagram. It was a commercial shoot for Kiss Kill. Yeah. And nobody saw what we just saw on the screen. But we're in a hallway of a hotel room, two girls in lingerie. I've got an on-camera flash. They're laughing like crazy and I've clicked. And it was like it's one of my favourite photos in the world. Yeah. The whole shoot took an hour and a half and we got so many pictures out of the shoot. But so have you ever, have you got any picture that you've taken that you freaking adore? I mean that... I, I adore would them at the, the time. Oh, would you, so anything you've, would you actually print it and put it in a private room for yourself to look at? I ha, I do have the one in the, in the, in the Telstra phone box. I do have that printed and hanging in my room. I love that picture. Yeah, no, That I, is the one photo I printed for I myself and I was love, like, I, and, and I've held actually, myself off so, so much not to <laughs> recreate that in black and white. You should. No, I'm not going to. I'm <laughs> never going to. Oh, that, that picture, I freaking adore that picture. But it was such a fluke also just to find the telephone box in the right, you know, that like. It doesn't matter. You the, had the no, eyes to the, see it and click the button. Yeah, but this, like, it was, but it was such a funny, it was one of those moments where, like, we drove past it. Maddie was driving, who is the model that's in the picture. And I, I pointed I it out put, to her. I will I said, put a link to this picture oh so God, you can see it. Look at that phone box. That's such a cool, like, we should do a shoot there. And she's like, why don't we do it right now? And I hesitated. And she, as the model, was like, no, bitch, let's, like, you just had the idea. Let's just, like, there's a turn off right here. Let's go back and do it. And this was, like, at the front of McDonald's. It was, like, 8 p.m. at night. There's families going through getting their happy meals. And here's Maddie <laughs> butt naked. Happy, meal. happy meals. <laughs> <laughs> Here's Maddie butt naked in a, like, she's such a trooper also. But so is, yeah. it, is it anywhere where it's up that's not censored? Yes, it is on my website, Uncensored. Oh, I'll get the link yeah. off you. So I'll, yeah. set, I'll send, I'll put the link of the Uncensored. I can't yeah. send the censoring, but that's a me thing. Yeah. But yeah, it's, a, but see, there you go. Yeah. That's one, yeah, that's one shot that I'm like, yeah. Alright, so now you have to shoot another oh, one. The girl, the girl in the bushes in Guadeloupe as well, I call it, it's called Exotic Fruits, but it's a little bit, it's a little bit. Can't remember, one of my favourites, that blonde girl, short. Oh, you have to shoot with her. You yeah. did a beautiful picture of her. Yeah. You're talking about, um, oh, oh. if she ever watches this, she's going to be like, I can't believe you didn't remember my name. <laughs> <laughs> you're dead to her. You're gone. <laughs> but she's stunning and she's from Berlin. I know who you're talking about. Yeah, you, you shot her, I either shot her a couple of times or you got a lot of good shots of her. Yeah. 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 No, I've thoroughly enjoyed that. Just FYI. FYI. So Shay's going flat at the moment. I am. Um, I'm just seeing, oh, we've got seven minutes left. What was it? Was it orange or? It's orange. It? You got enough wine? Oh, she's recharging I'm herself. I'm recharging right she's now. Charged her <laughs> sound. She, so I need to find this now so I don't put the wrong picture up. So I'm going to go in on, so what side am I looking at? Is it on yours or your, your ph photography site? My photography site's allmyfault.net. 
What are you talking about? Maybe it's on my Instagram? Oh, I'm really, I'm useless at doing this stuff. So <laughs> what I'd find the best way for me, if I go to my messages, I find I've messaged you, I then go to you, then I'll look on your Insta. Then you find the profile. you got to click profile, not the... There we go. <laughs> and then I can see all my fault. He's missing you back. <laughs> no, this is what I do every single day. Now I'm going to scroll so I know no, what... No, so not, not this girl. Yeah, that girl. Okay, yeah. So that's Eka. Is she a muse? No, I've only shot with her. That was from the one shoot we did together and it was iconic. Freaking love yeah. that shoot. Is that on your webpage as well? Yeah. Although yeah. even I could link this picture because it's pretty cool. Yeah. But the thing is, everyone's going to go on there and go, mm -hmm. but this is the thing. If you don't understand the genre, you don't get it. Yeah. And because I love that genre due to a lot of the fashion magazines I used to look at. And I can't think of the other one. There's there definitely Noise, Oyster, Frankie. Mm -hmm. Frankie was, was a good one. Frankie was yeah. a great. Are they still going? I'm not sure. I feel like they could be. I feel like they're one of those like little indie corner, like yeah. weird, you know, that like you would find it in a very like, There'd be like 30% of Frankie. I said, what, no, what's going on here? But the rest of Frankie was like, oh, that's a bit cool. Yeah. No, they did some cool stuff. But, yeah. Magazines. I hope magazines could make a comeback, to be honest. When was the last time you bought a magazine? So how are a they year and a half ago. How are they going to come back when everyone only half, buys one no, a year and a half ago? No, but here's the thing. If, if I could actually find an inspiring magazine where I'm like, I want that as like, I would collect it. I would make it like a little collection, like coffee coffee table. Book I've still thing. got my full collection of numeros. Exactly. But I haven't bought the new stuff, it just seems to be lacking. It doesn't have that same. Exactly. People, everyone asks me this question. When's the last time you bought a magazine? Well, I will buy it when I say one worth buying. I'm sorry. You know? It's like, it's like the chook and the egg. What's no, it is. First? It's like yeah. the chook and the egg. The the chook has gone the wrong way. Yeah. And now it doesn't lay eggs. Yeah. We need some way. I don't know how they're going to. We need fashion magazines to go back doing proper editorial shit, which is not advertorial and people paying for it. That's making it soft and wooshy. Yeah. And once you do that, people will buy your magazine again, because I'm. I there's nothing better than looking at a magazine. Seriously, the. I'm sick and tired of looking at, well, I only see fashion now on friggin' my iPad or my computer and a little bit on my iPhone. It's not the same thing. No. I pulled out a magazine in the studio just before we left and I was flicking through it going, I miss this so much. And I used to spend like 350 to $400 a month on magazines, magazines for the studio. Yeah. And I can't tell you the last time I bought a magazine. I bought books, but I haven't bought magazines. I can't tell you the last time I saw an editorial where I'm like, oh, that's amazing, you know? Oh, uh, I've seen one or two online. Yeah? Yeah, I was pretty impressed by There's one Candace did and there's one M. Rather did, and I was going, oh, I actually like this. Oh, there's this one actually of this, oh, I have to bring it up after, but it's like this mermaid shoot. Yes, I've seen that. You've that's, seen that's it? That's a that bit, was yeah. amazing. That was very if cool. If we can find it, I'll put in the link. If we can't, yeah. bad luck. Search yeah. mermaid shoot. Yeah. <laughs> That was a cool shoot there that I was like, okay, yeah. But I don't know, I just think of, I don't know, so many amazing photographers that were shooting these incredible, okay, Tim friggin, oh, I can't think of his surname. I'm going to make him fool of myself because he's so good and I can't remember his name. <laughs> his work was just surreal and it was like Dali and Cross with Alice in Wonderland and all his shoots were just like crazy. I haven't seen his work for ages. I wonder if he's still creating. I have to look it up. Yeah. Also, I, I'm certain, I'm nearly certain Erwin Olaf's still alive and his work was just like through the roof. I know a lot of it he does in Photoshop, he shoots it fairly flat and then adds to it, but it's still, to have a series in an exhibition called Grief, and it's a picture of her lady in like a hotel room, you only see the back of her head and you just go, I can only feel grief. This is like killing me. I can't watch this any longer. Yeah. Then he really that, that's portrayed the skill. what he wanted to yeah, portray. Yeah, that's the yeah. skill. He did a series called Black and he did a series called White. And these black series, was, everything was black. But you can see everything in the picture, but everything was black. Yeah. It was like gimps and friggin', it was a whole like full on 
but he's like. Oh. Yeah, that's our alarm. Oh, that's our timer. We're allowed to go for five minutes more, but oh. then we're banned. Then we're cut off. Then we're banned. We get cut off. We get buried. <laughs> so to finish off, how was your first podcast? I was, was very this, nervous, but, it's but it's not now, that, now hard. that the timer's yeah. gone off, I'm like, oh fuck, we can keep going for hours. Well, this is what Beck absolutely loves it. She I actually says, like it. have a one hour chat drinking wine. I'll do this any day yeah. of the week. It's actually great. Yeah. So you do it again? I would do right. it, totally do it cool. again. Yeah. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah, I, I do I do enjoy it. We just took whatever comes up. It doesn't have to be photography or like with you it has been much more about photography and fashion and yeah. things like that. With Beck it's just about what do you do this week? <laughs> what happened in the <laughs> – what crazy adventures <laughs> happened on this tour? <laughs> so to fill everyone in, Beck has been to Harry Potter's studio and had fun and she's on her way to Amsterdam to go on Space Cakes again. Yeah, Although – Doobies. I don't think she will. I think she's going to friggin' some, put somebody else – oh, I shouldn't say this. <laughs> Oops, I got in trouble. But she's going to put somebody else on Space Cakes and then laugh at him two days later. <laughs> she's still got some left, no? No, all the rubbish bit. Oh, so she was that done with it. She sorry, was like, not again. <laughs> to finish off, so if we're checking out in the morning, it's like 10 o'clock, there's a bit of wine left in the bottle. I'm not putting that down in a freaking drain. She'll pour it in the glass and drink it before we leave. Yeah. Done that with the coronas before. Have you? Guilty, yeah. I... My French boyfriend was very shocked at seeing me skull three coronas at 9 a.m. in the morning pre-check out of our Airbnb, but I told him these Ooh. are like $11 each in Australia. I'm not wasting this. New York last year, <laughs> Bex got up and she's got three quarters of a bottle of wine in her room. It's 8 o'clock in the morning. We're checking out at 10 o'clock to get to the plane. She got through about half of it and she come in my room and she still had a bit and she just got to the bottle just, I'm not throwing this out and chugged it. Within 10 seconds, she was in the toilet and threw it all back mm. up. That's not going to go down well. <laughs> it was so funny. It was the funniest thing in the world. She goes, and, and on the, so it was, I think it was actually Amsterdam. There was a little bit of wine left. She goes, mm. and I was, oh, what's your point? And the thing goes, this is not the Beck I know. You got smarter. <laughs> But then before back, I, my old assistant, Rosie, were in LA and I had like this much of Southern sitting in the freezer. I'm not travelling with it, I'm not tipping it down sick. So I just put a block of ice in a glass, put it in the toilet. I'll just sip it while I'm packing up. I walked in the kitchen, she's poured it down the sink. Sacrilege. She didn't know. Hence why she's not the assistant. Hence why no, Beck's <laughs> my assistant. No. <laughs> no, Beck, she didn't do her job and Beck did her job did better than she did her job and she got embarrassed and quit and then Beck took over. Anyway, um, hope you enjoyed. Where uh, My next one's going to be with Matt and then I think then I'll be back in Australia and I think Rara is going to be my next. Ooh. Oh, I'll put the pressure on her. Yeah. She'll crack under cameras. <laughs> but I'm going to force her to do it. Anyway, thank you very much. Hope you enjoyed.